Number 15. Consider the 12 kilogram motorcycle wheel shown in figure 10.38. Assume it to be approximately an annular ring with an inner radius of 0.28 meters and an outer radius of 0.33 meters. The motorcycle is on its center stand so that the wheel can spin freely, meaning no friction. Letter A. The drive chain exerts a force of 2200 newtons at a radius of 5 centimeters. What is the angular acceleration of the wheel? All right, so here's a little picture, right? An angular ring is basically what it shows this, this particular wheel here, where there's mass located at a certain distance relative to the axis of rotation, okay? So I have that picture drawn over here. Now, if you go in your text, because we're probably going to need the moment of inertia for an angular ring, page 359, you'll notice this particular picture over here, and it says an angular cylinder or ring. All right, so right here we have the moment of inertia for this particular rotating body. And if you notice, all we need is the mass and the inner and outer radius, which they did give us. They gave us the mass and they gave us the inner and outer radius. So I know I have the moment of inertia. I'm asked to calculate the angular acceleration, all right, and it tells me that a force is being exerted at a distance relative to the axis of rotation. So that sounds like a torque to me. So if I were to look at the picture here in yellow, here's the middle of the wheel, this is the axis of rotation, there's a force being applied of 2200 newtons, and that force is acting at a distance of five centimeters, which I converted to meters, all right, from the axis of rotation. So these two items here produce a torque, a force applied at a perpendicular distance relative to an axis of rotation. That is a torque. And now therefore, I know I have torque, and I know I can also solve for the moment of inertia over here. And now I have to think, well, how does all that connect to angular acceleration? Oh, it connects via this equation right over here on the right-hand side. So for letter A, the equation tells us that the sum of the torques in the problem, which there's only one, right, because they said it's the wheel is freely spinning. So that's going to simply be equal to the moment of inertia of the particular rotating body multiplied by the angular acceleration of the object. So in order to solve for alpha, this is just simple algebra, right? Sum of the torques, sum of the torques over the moment of inertia. Let's expand on each. So here we have now the torque, remember, is equal to the force applied multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm of that particular applied force, all divided then by the moment of inertia, and I'm just simply copying the formula down there, all right? So it's the mass over two, then multiplied by the inner radius. It doesn't really matter if this is the inner or the outer, because you're adding both of these, the inner radius squared uh, plus the outer radius squared. And we have everything we need, right? So this is the formula. And all we have to do, how did that turn into a triangle? How did that turn into that? That's, that's even a better question. And there we go, that's the formula. So here we have the angular acceleration equaling the force applied of 2200 newtons located at a distance of 0 0.05 meters from the axis of rotation, that's the torque. And the mass then of the wheel they told us was 12 kilograms over two multiplied by 0 0.280, that's the inner radius squared plus then the outer radius 0 0.330 squared and this part's easy now, right? Just plug it on in. So 2200 multiplied by 0 0.05. Divide that whole thing now by uh, 12 over two times parentheses 0 0.28 squared plus 0 0.33 squared. And what do we get? Let's see, we get about 97.9 or so. And yeah, it looks like about three sig figs. So that should be fine. So we get 97.9 and that is radians per second squared. And that's the angular acceleration, all right? So a lot of information is throw, uh, thrown at you in this problem, but you have to try to simplify it into a, into a picture, understand the nature of the objects you're, you know, that are being discussed, a force applied at a perpendicular distance relative to an axis of rotation. You might say, well, wait a minute, it, it didn't tell me it was perpendicular. Well, I mean, the picture kind of over here did, right? There's a force over here and it's perpendicular. There's the R that they're telling us, but you know, if they don't tell you a, a direction, don't assume, always assume that it's perpendicular then. Don't assume it's some other value because then we can make up whatever value we want, right? It could be two degrees, three degrees, 14 degrees, 
45 degrees, whatever, all right? And obviously all the answers will be different. Let's move on. So letter B, what is the tangential acceleration of a point on the outer edge of the tire? So now we have to think, well, there's a point over here. Let's just, you know, choose this particular location right here. For this point, you know, if this force is being applied, it's going to rotate the wheel counterclockwise. Now, the angular acceleration is constant no matter where you are on the ring. For example, the angular acceleration here is the same as it is here, 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 whatever. I mean, I know there's no, there's no mass here, so you wouldn't be at a location there. But um, in any case, it's the same, the angular acceleration. But the tangential acceleration is different depending upon where you are. Okay, I spoke about this in a prior problem. I don't remember the number, um, but you know, reference some of the other earlier problems. I gave a very detailed discussion as to why. So in this particular case, what we need to figure out is how does the tangential acceleration, let's say at this particular point, we know it's going to be accelerating this way. Why? Because there's a force being applied in this direction. If we think about how that would rotate the wheel, it would rotate it uh, counterclockwise, and therefore the acceleration should be in that direction. And um, what we now need to figure out is how does the tangential acceleration, you know, connect with any other given information of the problem or anything we might have just solved for. And it connects via this equation, right? This equation tells me, right over here, that equation tells me that if I know, and I'll write it down, in order to calculate, not if I know, but if I, in order to calculate the tangential acceleration, I need to know the radius of the point I'm trying to calculate that tangential acceleration of and multiply it by the angular acceleration that the object is experiencing. So this R is relative to the tangential acceleration you're trying to calculate. That's why it is different depending upon where you are on the rotating body. If R changes, this changes. Alpha will be constant. Okay. So AT then will equal the, and it said on the outer edge. So the outer radius they told us was 0 0.33 meters. So here's 0 0.330 meters multiplied by my alpha, which is this value down here. Now you could plug in this whole mess. Okay. Um, if you had to find a formula, just take this junk, throw it on in, leave R alone. And that would have been your formula. I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna take this value. I'm gonna plug it in as 97.9, but when I do the calculation, I have the value saved in it, so I'm gonna use the exact value here. Instead of the 97.9, I'm gonna be using 97.88218544, okay? So take that, multiply it by 0.33, and you get 32.3, .3, about, right? So 32.3, and that is now in meters per second squared. Tangential accelerations are basically linear accelerations, therefore you have now meter per second squared. All right, last one. How long, starting from rest, does it take to reach an angular velocity of 80 radians per second? So now when you were asked a question like this, this is basic, this is kinematics, okay? It's rotational kinematics, but at the heart of it, the essence of it is kinematics. And sometimes what's easier is if you think about this in terms of linear kinematics. So they're asking you for the time, okay, question mark. We're starting from rest. That means the initial velocity is zero. And it wants us to find the final velocity basically, right? How long does it take to reach? So this thing is a final, this thing is a final velocity. So the final velocity is 80. And what else do we know? We also know the angular acceleration, right? That's also what we know, which is basically an acceleration, okay? So that was 97.9. So how would you calculate T if you knew these if you if you knew these three values and you had to solve for time? You might say, oh right, yeah, I remember that formula. Right? That formula, I'll write it down over here for letter C. That formula was VF is equal to VI plus AT. Great. But this is a rotating body. So this isn't the exact formula, but you're going to use the rotational analog, meaning instead of linear velocity, it's going to be angular velocity. Instead of linear velocity over here, which is the initial, it's going to be the initial angular velocity. Instead of linear acceleration, it's going to be the angular acceleration. And time obviously doesn't have a rotational or linear component. It's the same no matter what's rotating. So here's your formula, okay? 
got to solve that thing for time, right? Because they're asking how long. So therefore, let's just do some simple algebra. So this would be omega f minus omega i all over then our alpha. Here's the equation. Okay, there it is. Yeah, let me make that into a square. Oh my goodness, one more time. All right, so all we have to now do is plug in the values. I know I ran out of space over here. I'm going to use this space. So time will then be equal to um, the final, which was 80 radians per second. The initial was zero. The angular value was 97. The angular acceleration was 97.9. Again, I'm going to use try to use more of an exact figure, but it really shouldn't make that much of a difference. So it's 80 divided by, I'm going to use the value 97.882. That's good enough. So here we get a time now of 0 0.817, 817, and that's in terms of seconds. Okay, so that, that would be how long, all right? Don't get confused here. You might think, well, wait a minute, I'm, you know, I have a linear acceleration, so should I do this? Should I calculate the time linearly? Not exactly, because they're telling you to reach an angular velocity of 80 radians per second. So it's just much easier to do this problem in terms of the rotational analogs. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Hit that like button. Thank you, thank you. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.